In this question, we're asked to test the claims of a manufacturer. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've done that, you hopefully realise that this is a question all about energy. And it's the energy which is stored in this thing called a flywheel. This flywheel has been claimed to store 12 megajoules of energy so that it can supply 40 kilowatts of power for five minutes. We're told a little bit about the construction of the flywheel in that it has a diameter of 39 centimetres. Importantly, it's a ring and it has a mass of 48 kilograms. It initially rotates at 30,000 RPM as well. And we're asked to test whether these specifications are correct. Can this flywheel store 12 megajoules of energy? So in order to do this, let's develop this a little bit further. The flywheel itself is a ring. So all its mass is located at the edge. The mass distribution tells us something about the rotational inertia of the object. This is a wheel, it is rotating, so it's going to have a rotational inertia of mr squared. We're told the mass and we're told the diameter. So the mass here is 48 kilograms, correct units. The diameter is equal to 39 centimeters. That means that the radius is equal to 39 divided by 2 centimeters, but we have to have this in SI units, so that's going to be equal to 0.39 on 2 meters. In addition to the rotational inertia, we also know that the flywheel is rotating, spinning around, and this initial rotation rate is equal to 30,000 revs per minute. Now, that revs per minute is not the usual SI units for angular velocity, that would be radians per second. So we need to take that quantity and multiply by 2 pi radians per revolution divided by 60 seconds per minute. Just to remind you that revolutions per minute, I want to get something which is in radians per second, so I need to have radian on the top per revolution and I need to have a minute on the top divided by seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds and there are two pi radians per one revolution. Okay, so if we take 30 and multiply by 10 to the 3, so we've got a thousand there, we notice that uh, 30 goes into 60 twice, the twos cancel, and so we end up with that uh, the initial angular velocity is equal to pi times 10 to the 3 radians per second. It's often a good idea that when you see, as soon as you recognize that there is a unit change required, you just get it over and done with. We can calculate I and we know what omega is. Uh, how does this relate to energy? Well, remember that you know, kinetic energy of an object is given by a half times its mass times velocity squared, while the rotational kinetic energy is just given by a half times the rotational equivalent of mass, which is my rotational inertia I, and my rotational equivalent of velocity, which is my angular velocity squared. So those two formulas look very similar, that's probably easy to remember. This is going to be my total amount of energy which is stored as my object is rotating. Um, if I was to remove that energy and use it to drive the car, then the minimum it would be would be zero when it stops rotating. So this really tells me what the maximum amount of energy is. So what I want to do is find out is that um, less than or equal to 12 megajoules, or less than 12 megajoules, uh, the manufacturer is lying. If it's more than 12 megajoules, then the manufacturer's claims are fine. So now to evaluate my rotational kinetic energy, we start off with a half times I, remembering I is equal to MR squared, so we need the mass, which is 48 kilograms, times the radius squared, so 0 0.39 over 2 meters squared, that's I, uh, multiplied, or I should say, that there is I, multiplied by pi times 10 to the 3 all squared. 
if we go through, put that in our calculator to work out a numerical value for the rotational kinetic energy, we end up with uh, 9 by 10 to the 6. Uh, that should be the units of joules, which we can check. And unfortunately, that is less than 12 by 10 to the 6. So the answer is no. The specifications aren't correct. The manufacturer is lying. Um, so they've been called out. Uh, of course, we should uh, always um, go through and assess this. Uh, one way is to look at the um, units and make sure that is calculated in joules. We expect it should be uh, what we have here for the rotational kinetic energy. That's going to be equal to a half, which is unitless, times I. Um, my rotational inertia is given by kilograms meters squared, mass times radius squared, multiplied by my units uh, and frequency, so per second squared. Uh, now, one newton is equal to one um, kilogram uh, meter per second squared. That there is a newton multiplied by a meter to get my meters squared. So that I have one newton meter and a newton meter is equal to a joule. The other thing to take note is that um, you might ask yourself, well, what about the 40 kilowatts in the five minutes? There was some additional information there. Uh, all that is basically saying for the manufacturer um, is claiming that uh, if I run um, 40 kilowatts, okay, which is a power, for five minutes, so power times time, so five minutes times 60 seconds, so it's got the correct units, uh, then that would be uh, 40 by 10 to the 3 times 5 times 60 and if you work that out you get 12 by 10 to the 6. Um, the units of that of course uh, are what is a joule uh, per second uh, multiplied by seconds gives me my joules. So the, the claim the manufacturer makes of for saying that if I supply 40 kilowatts for 5 minutes I get 12 megajoules, that's perfectly fine. The problem is that the flywheel can't store 12 megajoules of energy. Um, so if it was supplying the 40 kilowatts, uh, it would only be able to run for a shorter period of time, which you can get um, by uh, basically, uh, let's see, if you've got that time, is going to be equal to the amount of energy divided by the power. So you could work out how long the flywheel could, could run for.